Hello, and you are back in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. This is our 28th episode, and today we will be discussing how New York is becoming even more of a hellhole, and Cardi B is really starting to get it. So, it is Turkey Day today, the day I'm recording this, so if you're in America and you celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you have a good one. Enjoy some good food, time with the family, but we're going to get right into it with the first topic being New York becoming even more of a hellhole. So there are two laws that have gotten through into um, New York, or let's say policies, be, that have been passed by uh, Hochul that I want to talk about as indicative of um, the Empire State meteoric decline, right? So the first one being is that New York State's education system is going to teach kids on proper disinformation, right? Equip them with the tools to navigate the digital landscape and find out what's really true, which means um, whatever the state wants um, to propagandize uh, you with, that's the truth. And anything else is, of course, complete and utter lies, reality, that, that re the realities of the world that don't align with the propaganda of the state is misinformation and they're going to basically brainwash the youth into thinking like that or try to i mean most kids who go to public school uh tune out i would say between 50 and 95 percent of what their teachers say so whatever program gets implemented i'm sure will be the same but of course it's very indicative that we as um or i would say not we the state um of new york I would say does not want um, a cult does not want a culture of um, in, in, inquisitive um, questioning um, well-rounded smart people. They just want people who are uh, just smart enough to do all the paperwork and push the buttons, but dumb enough to um, live in New York <laughs> and keep paying taxes um, to uh, New York State and accept the fact that New York is deteriorating, declining, and becoming an awful authoritarian hellhole that you have to pay out the ass to stay in in terms of cost of living and, and uh, taxes, especially New York City with the ridiculously high cost of living um, in terms of the rents to, to live in uh, shoeboxes and the fact that you have to pay a city income tax to, to live in New York. You've got to be a certain kind of um, idiotic to be in that environment and think it's not only okay, but good. And this is part of the um, that plan you want you got to get them while you're young so this is why they're doing it how effective will it be i don't know like i said i, I would i would dare say like like i said before the average kid in public school is going to tune out 50 to 95 percent of whatever their uh, teachers say and by the time the summer rolls around they just forget all of it anyway so will this have the um impact that people think it's going to be no but it's indicative that new york is extremely orwellian i think the more concerning thing and this is something that happened a while ago where this was getting passed through but basically um the supreme court of new york struck down a challenge um to a law where new york basically has the right to detain anybody for any reason whatsoever during a time of emerg emergency or right, that that's the the basic thing so you had these um, COVID internment camps in Australia, and they'll happen in New York with this law if they, they find the reason to do it and they um, push it in. Now, I, I think this is part of the longer game, so I do think within the next decade or so, we're either going to see COVID 2.0 where these lockdowns happen again because there's another pandemic that's totally real and going to kill us all and we have to do everything they say, wear the masks and get the vaccines and yada yada or else you're going to, you know, be a grandma killing person who wants um, the entire world to um, die the way, the way it happened with the Black Plague or the Bird Flu or, or the Spanish Flu or whatever whatever the case was or they just do climate lockdowns and anyone who's like well i i'm going to drive my car even though i don't have the carbon credits to do it will get thrown into one of these camps and this is laying the groundwork for it and you'll see this happen in the bluest areas of the blue states so like new york city los angeles chicago are where these play where these policies will be implemented first and then it will trickle out to the rest of the u.s based on how receptive people are to it there so if you see this happen in new york city and 90 percent of the people are like fuck no we're not doing this um we're we're, we're going to choose freedom which I, I think is unlikely the case um most people are lemmings and the people who aren't lemmings are leaving 
including me, eventually, I, I do plan to get out of New York. I'm not in the city, so it's not quite as bad um, for me, but New York is definitely a place I'm, I'm planning on getting the hell out of Dodge when um, when the uh, when the going gets good for me, then uh, I'm, I'm going to get out. So, I'll, but to people who've got their heads screwed on, you know, the way where, you know, you're, you care about freedom, you want to be an individual, you're just going to leave the blue areas and you're just going to leave the people who will just comply with this stuff because it's, well, you know, what we've got to do to save grandma or to save the planet because, you know, I, I trust the government or, I, or the state um, is got my best interests at heart or, or whatever the uh, the nonsense is used to justify that. And like I said, it will trickle out. So this is laying the groundwork and the groundwork's very well laid. I mean, this might, you know, get a challenge to the Supreme Court might might not they, they only accept so many cases but for now this is um part this law is in the books ready for them to use it and ready for them to implement the next lockdowns so whether that is a next pandemic or it's climate lockdowns so whatever it is it's on the horizon and you want to be prepared for it especially if you live in one of these blue states you want to be aware that they do not care about your rights um to as an individual your freedom it's security overall security is paramount um especially with the state they want to have a secure safe society so they can exert the most amount of control over the individual as possible and that means you know locking your freedom of movement locking your ability to speak your ability to transact um and they like like you saw with the uh, COVID lockdowns in so many ways where they were shutting down businesses and they weren't letting people protest unless you were protesting the right thing, right? You, you'll, you'll see that all happen again most likely and it'll be turned up to 11. If you thought the, the COVID lockdowns were bad, it'll be even worse next time around because that's when they're really going to try and c cinch it in. So there's my uh, little rant on that. But to keep it um, centered on New York, because New York is just so uh, so much stuff to talk about, uh, and Cardi B is aware of this as well. We're going to talk about Cardi B. I, I know, weird. Uh, for, for me, I don't like Cardi B's music. I, I think it's uh, trash. It's garbage. It's not my thing. Whatever, if you like it, I don't know why you're listening to me, but if you like it, more power to you. But Cardi B goes on, makes a five-minute video where she rants about how New York City has to slash their budget by over $100 million. school, sanitation, policing. You know, their budgets get slashed, but Joe Biden is talking about how we can afford to fund two wars while um, people can't afford to um, pay their rent and their grocery bill in the same month, right? And that's that's the problem that she is getting at, and she's aware of that, and she's like, well, I'm not going to support anyone anymore because this is what ha has happened at the end result, right? So a bunch of people came. Gave her money, said, hey, tell him to, um, you know, be okay with Weekend at Biden's. And she was okay with that because she got a fat paycheck, she cashed a check, and now look at where we're at. So that this is definitely reaping meets sowing. That is very much the case with Cardi B. And I'm glad she's turned around to it. And I'm not saying she has to go and support whoever the Republican candidate is. And even if it is Trump or or you know, DeSantis or whoever, I, I wouldn't say supporting the Republican candidate is what I would want her to do as the culturally optimal outcome. Of course, you know, what I want basically everybody to do is to go full ANCAP. And that, that would be funny if <laughs> um, Cardi B started uh, sounding like Javier Malay. That would be hilarious. And of course, if she did something like that, that would be a huge cultural win in my book. I don't think that's going to happen at all. But it's nice to see that more people with more influence are becoming aware of just how shit things are and they don't don't want things to be shit right and i i do remember i think it was her or maybe some other rapper i'm um, talking about the rise of living um the rise of the cost of living inflation like how well you know the people in my life they, they've got me i can you know keep them you know fed and their their rents paid for but how are people surviving when, when things are like this a lot of people just aren't a lot of people have checked out from um, living in general with the suicide rates and the homelessness and all these sorts of things because we live in a very bleak, fatalistic society and it's not like the state is giving people reasons to believe um, in themselves with the increasing cost of living and also we don't have a cultural foundation to this country where we believe this country is good and righteous and um, something that should actually exist. So many people hate this country and we have to hate this country because, you know, 
you've got stuff like the 1619 Project, and we're still foaming over the mouth um, over slavery, and that's all um, white people saw. And by extension, this entire country has to be decolonized. And you've got people who go the other way around and lean way too much into... Um, I'd say fundamentally, you know, patriotism at all costs, defending the country at all costs. This is the best country, and of, all, of course, it comes with, you know, a lot of quote-unquote race realism. So you've got people who are white nationalists, people who are black nationalists, and they both feed into each other. You know, the one, you know, side of the coin justifies the other side of the coin existing in, in my mind. So I, I don't like thinking of people in terms of their... Um, race or, or even their ethnicity, right? It's more like, what are your cultural and moral values and are they compatible with mine? And if they are, we'll associate. If they're not, then leave me alone. And that, that's the mindset that people certainly need to have, but that's not the mindset people have at all. And this is part of the cultural decline. But And, and Cardi B is seeing this and she's definitely seeing just how incompetent um, the administration of... Um, New York City is and the federal government. So the, you know, the thing you've got with New York City is you've got the migrant crisis, you've got all the homelessness from the people who live there. Uh, and then you're importing um, economic migrants into New York City. And a lot of this is, you know, from the you know, Biden administration's decisions at the southern border, increasing the people who are coming into the country and, you know, a lot of them come into New York, and that all feeds into it. And, you know, you can't house these people, can't feed these people, can't get these people jobs. So they're just a strain on the resources of the city. And because the resources of the city are being strained, they're going to cut things, and they're not going to cut anything that would make the elite's lives harder. They want to cut things and make it harder for the average working person in New York City to get on by. And, of course, that's a damn shame in Cardi B sees that and she's aware of that and she knows well you know supporting biden is part of the problem so i'm not doing that anymore and that's fundamentally a good thing so i do think the tide is changing i think people are seeing just how rotten the system is and they don't want to participate in it anymore it's just well you see that what's the next step i think the next step personally is to be as um, libertarian as possible, to focus as much on building a culture that encourages individuals to be strong and take radical personal responsibility, because if you can provide for yourself, then you can start providing for other people. And the more people can do that, the less will be dependent on these big um, state-funded um, social safety nets and these urban centers that are collapsing in on themselves. The less we're dependent on that, the better society will be, the more strong and prosperous, prosperous uh, we're going to become, and the less we'll have to worry about these shenanigans that are completely Orwellian because people will just fundamentally check out from them and will be culturally impossible to enforce. Uh, that, that's why um, the trucker... Um, protests in Canada was so successful because you had this critical mass of people say we're not doing this anymore and then actual change happened so if people were in that mindset then you know stuff like these laws that are being passed in New York wouldn't matter because people were like well we're, we're not doing this at all it's not acceptable and then you, you wouldn't see this stuff happen but we live in a, in a, a culture where most people uh, don't care they're just going from one dopamine hit to the next so all this stuff can be snuck in and then when it you know you know, when the road meet, when the rubber meets the pavement or the rubber meets the road, then they get some um, pushed in and most people just go along with it because you're used to going along with things. That's just how it is. But I think with that, I'm going to end this one. Like I said, it is Turkey Day, the day I'm recording this and putting this up. So I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. I did say that before, but I will say that again. And uh, we're going to go to the outro now. Thank you for being in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. Be sure to follow my Substack, velvetroompublishing.substack.com, to read Machine to Man and all my other projects.